KPFK. Thank you, Emergency. Emergency has this remarkable bunch of people here in L.A. who came out of nowhere, just like L.A. came out of nowhere, I guess. Uh, uh, and uh, they're obviously very good organizers. Um, uh, well, I, I've known Gino Strada for a few years now. I, I got to know him uh, when I was asked to write an introduction to, to his book, Green Parrots, uh, A War Surgeon's Diary, which I urge you all to read. Um, and uh, so I, I did it. And it, writing the introduction, of course, I had to read it. Uh, sometimes that happens. And so, uh, uh, difficult book to read. Well, obviously, and you know, and and Gino has shown you here uh, the kind of work he's done, and you can only imagine what in 10 to 15 years of of working on war victims, uh, what that means, what that's like. But what interested me was when I came to the end of his book, and at the end of his book he says, in effect, uh, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to operate on children anymore. I don't want to amputate the arms of kids who have been devastated by landmines anymore. You know, we need to abolish war. And, and then he invited me to Rome which is, of course, a difficult invitation to accept. Uh, but I went. And, and, and then you might say he enlisted me in the idea of starting to spread the word in this country and, and everywhere, uh, the word that we cannot accept war anymore as a solution for any of the problems that we have in the world. Uh, I mean, we are now struggling, we in this country, to stop the war in Iraq. We're, we're working very hard on that. Um, and, and we're going to succeed. Uh, the war in Iraq is going to have to come to an end. Uh, and, but what happens then? What happens after the war in Iraq? Uh, our country has been fighting war after war after war ever since the end of World War II, ever since that war which was supposed to bring an end to war. Uh, and after Vietnam, we thought, no, no more wars. And then the, the government decided also, oh, well, the, the, the people of the United States apparently have turned against war. This is bad. They described what they called the Vietnam Syndrome. Syndrome is, is a word for sickness. The sickness was that the American people had turned against the government, against the FBI, against Congress, against the establishment, against the war. This was the Vietnam Syndrome, and the United States government set out to uh, somehow do away with that syndrome uh, by fighting small, quick, victorious wars against weak opponents to get the American population accustomed uh, to war you know, once again. And this is what they've been trying to do. Uh, and uh, the Iraq war represents the latest of it, except that it hasn't been quick. It's been going on for three years. And, uh, and it may be that the, the Vietnam syndrome uh, has not been eliminated, uh, that the American people uh, are beginning to understand uh, the futility of war, uh, the immorality of war. We're seeing a growth in consciousness uh, among the American people, and, and that's a very positive, uh, encouraging thing to see. But what comes next? You know, well, they're already beating the drums for for war in Iran, right? Already talking about bombing Iran, already drawing up the plans. And when they're confronted with this, um, uh, they said, we're only drawing up plans. Uh, uh, 
they're creating a hysteria about Iran the way they created a hysteria about Iraq. Uh, I don't think they will succeed this time. I, th I think the American people have learned something uh, about the war uh, in Iraq, which uh, makes them more suspicious of what the government is saying about Iran. Uh, but I think we have to think about not this war, not the next war. We, we don't want to have to create another anti-war movement and another anti-war movement and another anti-war movement. We really have to present to, in the world the idea, an idea which, which is so obviously utopian and long-term, but an idea which absolutely must take hold. Uh, its time has come. You know, the, and the idea that war must be abolished. And, and uh, G Gino Strada showed you, you know, told you about, about uh, Einstein's quote. When Einstein said that in 1932, he was attending a, a, a conference in Geneva, which, which was called a disarmament conference. Anytime you see the words disarmament conference, be suspicious. When the governments of the world use the word disarmament, they, they don't mean it. And so Einstein attended this disarmament conference. He, he, like so many people, was disillusioned by a uh, horror of World War I. And what did he hear at this disarmament conference? He heard these nations talking about, well, uh, these weapons will be banned, and these weapons will be okay. And he did something which uh, nobody expected Einstein to do. He called a press conference. Einstein doesn't do things like that. But he did, and he said, uh, and you saw those words on the screen, war cannot be humanized, war can only be abolished. And that's the, that's the theme of this campaign uh, that we want uh, to initiate. And you are part of the initiation. <laughs> we expect you to spread the word. You expect you to, not just to stop the war in Iraq, but we expect you to begin talking to everybody you can about the abolition of war itself. Governments are not going to do it. Governments can never be depended uh, to advance the cause of peace or justice or human rights. I mean, in, in the course of human history, governments have never been dependable uh, in taking care of the needs of people. And uh, after all, governments are uh, not set up for that purpose. <laughs> Governments are set up to serve certain interests, and those not, are not the interests of the people. This is a very important thing for people to grasp, uh, people who have some naive conception that we very often grow up with in this country, that the government is our friend. And the, you know, no, the government is not our friend. Occasionally, <laughs> occasionally it can get friendly when there's a great people's movement that compels it to be friendly. And then, you know, you, you know. Uh, so it is really up to us, it is up to the people of the world uh, to abolish war because governments won't do it. And very often you hear uh, it's said that, well, people are not going to do it because war is part of human nature. How many times have you heard that? How many times have you heard, I think I once figured it out, any time you get into a discussion of war, uh, like 12 minutes into the conversation, somebody says, oh, it's human nature. Test that out. It's a, it's a scientific observation of mine. 12 minutes, yeah. Uh, if war were a part of human nature, Governments would not have to go to such enormous lengths to persuade people to go to war. People would rush spontaneously. No, they, governments have to work at it. They have to work very hard at it. The natural instincts of people are not for war. The natural instincts of people are for compassion and comradeship and brotherhood and sisterhood. Those are the natural instincts of people, but uh, governments work work very hard 
Uh, they work by seduction, they work by propaganda, and they work by coercion to get people to go to war.